Oh, like spun around and flipped it. But then when I came back in, I noticed they patched all the holes in the drywall, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> We are. <clears throat> Ready? Mm -hmm. I'd like to call the meeting to order for October 22nd, 2024. Would you please rise for the next time? Thank you. Please join in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Um, Trustee Sheets. Trustee Hunter. Here. Trustee Good. Here. And we'll go on to visitors. Is Hannah on? Uh, Hannah is not on. Well, I'm Captain Lennox. I will make a motion to pay our expenditures. I have a second. I'll second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Yes. Trustee Hunter. Yes. Trustee Good. Um, yes. And I wanted to give a list of expenditures. Since there were questions about how money is being spent, um, just for a report on financial information, um, on the meeting on 10 8, there were 31 checks for a total of $19,108.21. 
For tonight's meeting, there's 16 checks for $29,994.47. For the payroll on 10-8, gross payroll was $109,134.95, and that included $12,500 for paramedic bonuses. Um, the payroll for today was $57,000. $18.99. There was a payment to Aetna for insurance premiums for $26,054.98. There was a payment to the IRS for the October 8th payroll for $12,435.81. There was payments to deferred comp for $1,810. There was a payment for September state and local taxes, um, 4,704. And there was 54,000 for the township's contribution for the HSA 2024. Did you wanna do this pays or? Pardon? Did you wanna do this pays this week's? Oh, it's included, I did that, yeah. You did those in the the ten twenty two. Yep. All right. Okay, we'll go on to department reports. Deputy Atkins. Good evening. My name is Dan Atkins. I apologize for never staff. I was in the town this week. Um, next meeting. Uh, just a few updates. We've had a lot of break-ins. First time you guys heard, you know, a prairie fire. They had a break-in of vehicle stolen last night. Just a reminder: keep the doors locked. Try to keep valuables out. Any vehicles are not. Keep us in the cars. Do a lot of that. Other than that, Harrisburg, George, Bill Rowe is out with the zone inspector. Was out with my guy right now last week. Um, I think we have that gentleman squared away. Um, he will not be running this as there, but they gave him some other avenues to look at. So hopefully that issue is taken care of. I saw the speech trailer out there. I'll pull that this week and get the stats off that. Thank you. Hey, Robert. Well, we were moving right along on the main road ditch, um, but I got to a point where what I can't do what I want to do because of a shallow phone line that belongs to at and So I contacted Steve Buzzkirk of County Engineers, who's kind of in charge of the utilities in the area, and he gave me a contact number for the gentleman that works for at and He said, a lot of times they'll come reroute the line or meet on site to go over what area I'm going to clean off and make them bore a new line in and then I can get back to doing that. <clears throat> Truck 21, the hydraulic tank on it was as a hole uh, in the bottom of it from just years of salt. Um, American Force is looking for a new tank right now to install on that. We finally got our road mower back together and we're about finished up going around the last, well, there might be one more mowing after this. All depends on Mother Nature, but we're finishing up from the last time. Finally had to start mowing the cemetery again since we got some rain finally. And then we're in the process of doing that as well. Then the hot tub was dumped on Grasley Road and we got it picked up the same day it was reported to me. So that's all I have. Thank you. Hey, Jimmy. Uh, yeah, um, medic 231 still brawn. Um, engine 231, uh, we ended up at, we finally got the front tires replaced. Tanker 231, we had an airline rupture and they had the flatbed truck bring it back to the station. Um, American Force is who we've been using and same with Robert and the road crew. and. I have to say, it was the guy was at the Circleville Pumpkin Show with his family, and we called him, and he left them and come out and spent probably five or six hours and had to go and get parts and stuff and fix it. So the company we changed over to has been a lot better when it comes to service and a lot cheaper too. I'm, so, I'm very satisfied with him so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, yesterday we had training fire. Um, that was a success. The homeowners were happy. Uh, we have participation from Prairie, Tri-County, and Jackson Township. 
all came out and played and, and we I think we saved the homeowners about $28,000 because that's what it was gonna cost for them to tear it down. So when the burn ban hit, uh, we were getting ready to burn it the next day and the burn ban hit and we couldn't burn it. And uh, so fortunately we got rid of that and were able to burn it for them because it saved them a whole lot of money. Um, billing, uh, we're working on uh, reports uh, to the feds we have to do annually. We've completed our hydrants in Harrisburg and Timberlake uh, our boat motor is uh, uh, unable to be repaired, so we're going to be looking to replace that in the future. And um, I think we need to look at, um, with your permission, I want to look at a camera system, maybe look at our lighting too for the complex here, especially in lieu of what's going on, because they seem to be hitting a lot of the fire stations. Uh, Prairie, one of the firefighters got his car stolen last night and they're breaking into vehicles. Um, I think they've hit Jackson already. They've hit a couple departments up north where they've stolen vehicles. So they seem to be making their rounds. And I know our township property, we have a lot of valuable property between us and the road crew. And so I think we need to take a look at that with your permission. I'd like to go down that path and see if we need to upgrade any lighting or security cameras too. So call Joe Benson about the security camera. What's that? Joe Benson. Okay. For city. He okay. does them all over. Okay. Up yep. there and every, and yep. they've got everything that happened okay. on camera. So, yeah. And then maybe uh, Robert, Robert and I will sit down and look at our lighting, make sure we got uh, adequate lighting that covers um, everything around here because it's, uh, they're obviously making their rounds. They know where to go. And so uh, we'll go from there. And then, uh, let's see, I got a uh, thank you from uh, Ann Schmidt. Um, she said her, her husband is a retired Columbus Fire uh, Battalion Chief. He passed away uh, a, a week or so ago, and she sent a thank you. She, have nothing, she said, I have nothing but praise and respect for the medics and firefighters of Pleasant Township. Throughout Bob's illness and death, they were incredibly respectful, even calling him chief. They performed their duties expertly and went above and beyond to ensure his care and comfort. She said they are the best. So that's all I have. I'll be right back. You guys are making me nervous. My keys are in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> 1920 anymore, Robert. <laughs> I wish I would have known that. <laughs> Don't move it. I don't move it. <laughs> Hands on two minutes. Hannah's on. Hi, Hannah. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Do you have any questions so far? Not thus far. Thank you. All right. Okay, we'll go on to old business. We have the Swaco papers? Yes. Sir. We have a letter of engagement from Eastman and Smith. That's the attorneys that handle our consortium contract. It's at no cost to us, but they need a signature of each one of us for a letter of engagement to represent us. So I have that. I have that. Motion. Motion. Okay. What number are we on? 72. I'll make resolution 72 to use Eastman and Smith as our attorneys for the consortium trash collection. I'll second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets? Yes. Trustee Hunter? Yes. Trustee Good? Yes. Okay. Any other old business? Yes. Uh, while we were on talking about trash collection, I was asked last week about uh, a fuel surcharge uh, that shows up. And what I have is our contract for the uh, trash collection. And how that fuel surcharge comes about is the Department of Energy puts a report out quarterly. According to our contract, that is how the fuel price is based on that national energy report that is put out. 
I have a copy of our um, consortium contract. There's a formula in there. It's collect the uh, fuel surcharge by the quarter. And if anybody wants to look at the formula, I have it here. It's only by quarter. It's not by month. So when you get your bill, if the Department of Energy feels that the price is up, they're entitled to that surcharge. New business. I'll be attending the Big Derby Accord Jurisdictions Workshop on Thursday from 9 to 12. And you want to explain your letter? Yes, I was approached by Trustee Jeff Marshall from Fairfield Township, asked that we be in support with them and the Madison County Commissioners opposing the biodigester in Madison County. And I have prepared a letter I'd like to read. And this is to be sent to the Fairfield Township uh, trustees and to the Madison County commissioners. Subject to proposed biodigester facility in Fairfield Township. Dear commissioners and trustees, we are writing this to express our concerns regarding the <clears throat> the proposed biodigester facility with potential impact on our community. While we understand the importance of sustainable energy solutions, there are several issues we'd like to bring to your attention. First one being increased truck traffic. The facility will result in significant increase in truck traffic on our local roads. This raises concerns about our road wear, safety risks for pedestrians and drivers general disruptions to daily life. We urge you to consider ways to mitigate these impacts or explore alternative transport solutions. Number two, risk of hazardous material spills. Biodigesters involve the transport and handling of organic waste materials, some which could pose hazard if spilled during transit. There must be a clear plan to prevent spills and manage incidents quickly and effectively to avoid contamination or harm to our community. Number three, odors and air quality. While essential for waste management, these facilities often produce unpleasant odors that could affect surrounding areas. We hope the board ensures that any facility approved has measures in place to minimize or eliminate odor emissions to protect our air quality and maintain the community's well being. In light of these concerns, we respectfully ask the board carefully consider potential impacts on our roads and environment and public health before moving forward with this project. Safety and quality of life for our residents is crucial. Thank you for your attention in this matter. We look forward to hearing more about the steps being taken to address these concerns. Be signed with the district. Is it possible to add something in there about them going through Darkadale or Village, including through a school to the elementary school area? Have an hour or not? Just a thought. And I was just thinking, is it going to affect property values? Possible. Yeah. What do you think? So do we need a resolution that we're going to oppose this with them. Is that your feeling? That's my feeling. Make resolution 73 to oppose biodigester facility in Fairfield Township. I'll second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Yes. Trustee Hunter. Yes. Trustee Gutman. Yes. Which is I hate to say I oppose them, but I really don't. I thought we were sending a letter just to ask them to consider that. I I don't oppose, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stay out of this. So abstain. Yes, I'm gonna abstain. Okay. 
Anything else on the biodigester? Anybody else have any comments, concerns? <laughs> It's 500 feet from the bike path. Personally, that makes me sad because I use that bike path a lot. But and for them, I don't know enough about it. The same company. Um, I think they're all going after them. Violation by involving leaks, other, at other facilities that they have here in Ohio. How they're even able to do this, I, I have no clue. It, uh, it deserves to be. Swaco has talked about across the street, they want to put industry in that will contribute to what they do. It's the perfect place for it. The commercial industrial area, and that's what they're advertising doing, but obviously they would have a tough hill getting over with Grove City, but that's where it needs to be. I just spoke with the director of operations at Swaco. Early on, they were talking about collecting household <clears throat> garbage and processing it. There was going to be a facility at the corner of Young and Zuber, and they've abandoned that idea. So that wasn't going to be that wasn't going to fit for them. So, right, as I called them to see if they had anything to do with this. Thank you. Since our last meeting. I did little research, not a whole lot. You've been busy the last two weeks yeah. with a wedding. wedding. But, um, the Madison County commissioners have made a resolution opposing it, and the Fairfield Township trustees made a resolution opposing it also. Well, they bring in absolutely zero revenue because of what they do, and, and the damage to the roads is going to be significant and like you said the smell and that stuff too it's going to be an issue and they don't make any money off of that no nope. what's the point of there that? is no no it's the gas company makes the money yeah there's no yeah it's not like they're making any they're producing anything so. yeah because i don't actually yeah them. so there there is no yeah there's no revenue off of it i watched a podcast with one of the madison county commissioners who said they're trying to tap into a gas line if they tap into a utility then they are exempt from any local or county zoning <laughs> there is a line out there we drove the area this last weekend and there's a post out there so obviously but there are beautiful homes all but if, you know, if they can get the tap into that then they don't have to they're exempt from zoning and the roadways aren't designed for those trucks either. That's that's yeah. That and, came from the master. We have to respond to that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I couldn't remember. We did not set trip or treat date, did we? we? Um, Morpsey has recommended the day be. Thursday, October 31st, 6 to 8. So I will make a resolution 74 for Pleasant Township's trick or treat night to be Thursday, October 31st, 6 to 8. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Yes. Trustee Hunter. Yes. Trustee Good. Yes. And Harrisburg's having Boo and the Bird Saturday evening, 6 30 to 8 30 at the community center. Just for your information. And Morpsey also recommended everybody to check their local communities because a lot of communities do their own. Like Harrisburg. And then I don't know if you saw the invitation from Franklin County Engineers. It's the annual meeting for township and county authorities Thursday, November 21st at Villa Milano. And I will RSVP for you and I. Are you going? Yeah. Are you coming with me? Are you there? <laughs> How about you, Linda? 
This is just the first I've heard of it. So okay. I don't know. Am I going? It's a four go. Mm -hmm. Why not? All right. Yeah. I'll send the RSVPs in. Thank you. Are you going, Robert? Yeah. Let me send your RSVPs. Yes, do you want to text me? Just you? Yes. <laughs> yes, or me. You watch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, let's see. I have another resolution to make. Resolution 75. Um, whereas the Board of Trustees have determined that the public safety and welfare of the township requires that the streets in the area formerly known as Darbydale be lighted at, by artificial lights, that the proper officers of the township are authorized and directed to prepare plans and specifications for such lighting and proceed according to specifications for such lighting and proceed according to the law. Costs to be divided on per parcel basis, no interest charged cost to be collected for the lighting services provided for the years 2024 and 25. Do I have a second? This is just to do the assessments for mm -hmm. lighting district. Okay, I'll second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Yes. Trustee Hunter. Yes. Trustee Good. Yes. Do you need more than one since this is just our video? No, because I do that one one year and then I do Warren Hill and Timberlake the off years. Okay, and announcements. The Alpire Road over Hell Branch Run was delayed by two weeks, so it will not close until October 28th for about 21 days. Any other announcements? Okay, follow up. Okay, um, all the correspondence I got is just mainly notices and newsletters, that type of thing. Nothing out of the ordinary. All right. And I did check. I don't know if everybody else has checked, but I checked the uh, the HSA and the money is in the account now. Mine was not there this morning, but at five o'clock it was. So it got put in there after 2.30 today. It must have. As I checked like 11.30 this morning, zero. <laughs> and then about five o'clock, it was there. I would like to address that. Okay. I've had uh, numerous conversations with CME. So far, they've only received two checks from our township. Um, so the money really hadn't been put in there. Um, after a number of discussions with CME, CME decided to front the money and put it in our accounts with while they wait for the checks. So they are putting the money in our accounts um, by choice. And then when the checks come in, they'll just square it up then. So CME has decided to do that for our employees. And that's why there's money in the accounts. For future, would it have been easier if we would have just like did a regular? Well, just for the record, um, the day after the last meeting, which was the ninth, and Nancy can verify because I have her in the loop as I did it. I transferred fifty four thousand from the regular checking account over to the HSA account. Um, I went to schedule the $54,000 in payments. I got an error message that said the amount exceeded um, 
what I was allowed to do. So I assumed it was because I had just made the transfer. So I contacted Fifth Third and they informed me, the first representative I talked to informed me that we have a $20,000 limit a day. So I let Nancy know, I screenshot her the information. Um, I went back online and was gonna make a $20,000 arrangement. I got an error message that it exceeded the amount, I had to contact the third again, talk to a different representative. And they told me that because I had already, it's a $20,000 limit regardless of what account you're using. I had already made an arrangement to pay. Um, you and I both have a payroll deduction. So I'd already made that arrangement. So then I couldn't do the full 20,000. So then I was gonna do 18,000. Went back in, tried to do that, got another error message, contacted Fifth Third again, got a different representative, and they said they should explain to me that each payment can only be a maximum of $10,000. So I did a, went back on line, I did a scheduled a $10,000 payment and scheduled a separate $8,000 payment for that day. Then the following day, I did the same thing, a 10 and an eight, and the following day I did a 10 and an eight. Those were all done two weeks ago. Um, and so I have been in contact with CME about the situation and everything, and she said she would wait until Friday when all the checks should be there, and she would put the deposits in last Friday. But then when I talked to her on Friday, she told me that she'd only received two of the seven checks. And so she said, hopefully they would come in and they would do it. I can't watch anybody else's account except for my own. So I knew that my, the two checks she got was kind of in the middle of all the other checks. And so we weren't sure what happened to the checks before that or the checks that were supposed to come in after that. And so, um, because I can't watch anybody else's account, and I had got confirmation from the third that those had all went out. I printed them out when I ordered them, and then on the days they were supposed to be received by CME, I got confirmation from the third for each one of those checks, and I have all that here if anybody wants to see it. Um, and I had actually contacted CME today because and again, I can only watch my account, so I knew there hadn't been any activity, even the payroll deduction that I had sent in. And so um, when I emailed her, I said, can you give me an update on all these checks? And she said, when I got the email back from her today, she said they had only received still the two. I contacted the third who told me that um, until those checks are cashed or they would get returned to the bank, that they have no tracking on those. So they all were scheduled when they should have been. So, can I say so, something real quick? That, what uh, I was no, to say before. No, hang on, hang on, please, yeah. please. So they have received two checks. <clears throat> CME um, has said they will come out and pick up one check. You write a check for 54000 They will come out, pick that up, deposit it, and it'll go back to our bank, and then it might take a little bit longer to clear like any other check, it, but that's what they will do. They go out and pick up everybody's checks for all the HSA accounts that they do in the city. Uh, and, and they said, we don't have to do a thing. Just write a check for the next year, write a check. They will come out, pick it up, and take it and deposit it. Um, and, and that's the easiest way. It's a financial institution. If we're trying to send things um, in bits and pieces, like bill pay, you know, bill pay, there's limits. There are certain limits on things. If you write a check, it's like when we write a check to some of the companies that we do business with. We write big checks, and they cash them, and they go to the bank. We don't write them in three or four different checks when we pay 50, 60,000. We write one check, and that's all we have to do 
is write a check. They will come and pick it up and take it down there and deposit it. So that's where the issue lies. But CMA has chose to fund our accounts till they get the rest of the checks. They know that the other five are coming. They know they got two. They're waiting on the other five, but they chose to fund it because they didn't want to see our employees not have money in their HSA account. Okay, well, that option of them picking up a check was never mentioned to me. So that's the first time hearing up. So is that routinely what they do? Is that what that's you what said? they will do? Yep. But I yep. mean, is that what you just said? They routinely that's, do that for everybody? Yes, they do that okay. for everybody. And, right. and that's why they're bending over backwards to make it work for our employees. And that's why they fronted the money and put it in our account. So we'll make a note that for 2025, I think the contract says it'll be in there January 1st yep. for 2025. Yeah. So, and these separate payments, it's only going to happen once a year. It's not, that won't be in every time thing. What do you mean the separate payments? What you were just talking about, the sending them in separate checks. Right. All, all you need is one check. Well, no, I understand that. I'm saying, but it's a one time a year thing. It's not like it was going to happen all the time. It, every year, as long as that's what our contract is, they'll right. come out and pick up the check. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Every year. Yes. So the last meeting in December, we just transfer the money and write the check. They can come pick it up. Yeah. And then if employees want to, um, we have a form and Robert, I'll share it with your group too, or if you want to add additional money for payroll deduction, if you add, want to add money for your account that will go to, um, the, uh, Paula, I'll give you that. And you could submit that because it has the amount and, and then, uh, employees are also able to go to CME. And deposit in their HSA account too on their own. If so if someone wants to deposit additional money in their HSA, they can go do that on their own. Question about that. If if you decide you want to deposit money in your HSA account, it's not coming out of your paycheck. You're just walking in and giving it to. How will that work for the tax free benefit? The pre, you know, because now if you put something in out of your paycheck, it's before taxes. Yes. If I just walk in off the street, how do I make it be? You're you're not going to get that benefit. Okay, so really, you your your best bet is to do payroll deduction, payroll deduction. to get that. Okay. That yep. I yep. just wondered if yep. I knew something I didn't know. I have one more question about. Sorry. That's okay. Um, the period of time from June first to now. For those of us who were not continuing to use the debit card, but actually paid out of pocket for bills that technically should come out of that four thousand, how do we get reimbursed for those? You know what I'm talking about, like in expenses incurred after June. Yeah, like I've been paying my copays on prescriptions. Yeah, we probably need to call that Tony guy and and see call who. Uh, I don't know how to say his last name. Tony. Uh, oh, you mean you mean to use your HSA money that you have? Yeah, to hey. get reimbursed for what I. Why don't Why don't I have someone from CME come uh, to our next meeting and explain that all that information? That might be easier. Yeah, and they can because explain. I doubt Tony has anything to do because, with that. Because yeah, and and they can come in and explain it and go from there. Thank you. Being able to just reimburse myself from it, my HSA instead of being doctor's note, I pay myself and I had spent it out. And I believe I get it. Yeah. So, did you but just you go on make on? That's a good question. How did it? You might be able to, because you have to have a, like a savings account, that advantage account. You should probably be able to transfer from your HSA over to the other, which is like your savings account. I would think. The, the key is you have receipts that way, if you're ever audited, which, which you do. Yeah. I mean, cause you have the 2 accounts. So, right. 
And the, when I looked at mine today, I saw there's a thing to transfer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you ought to be able to do that, I would think. So are we still sending checks for the mail? To me, that's a risk. why are we sending anything to the mail anymore? Why? Those weren't checks. Those were. Well, there, well, no, there are checks, but that's how it was electronic, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, if you want a wire transfer, it's I think $45 a time, and then see that's at fifth third, and then CME, I think, was 15 to get it. But it's safe, but, but it took forever. That's that's what she did. She had to do it in six different transactions, then the bank sends a physical check. Right. So it's done like bill pay, like if you use a personal right. account. Yes. yes. Basically, the, the bank writes the check for me out of my account and sends it instead of me doing it myself. That basically what how it happened. Seems to me if you can't do ACH, that'd be worth the thirty-five or forty-five dollars, so that your employees have their money. It would have been a whole lot. Well, again, it's only going to happen once a year, and now we have a solution that's not going to cost us any more money. So the next time they'll come. You can just write a check. They'll come here, pick it up. We'll do it two weeks early. Get it done. I thought I read that in the meeting minutes that chief didn't you offer to take a check several months ago to CME? I, th I, I believe uh, uh, trustee Hunter offered to do and that. And then I offered two weeks ago or three weeks, four weeks ago. I just don't understand. I mean, it wasn't there at two thirty today, and now I've come prepared and. Now it's there. I'm like, what? How? Like, why was there? Why were there glitches? Why? When we knew that they would, I mean, to me, this has been. Yeah. Fifth third, it says, like, this was sent October 9th. October 9th. And, and our and stuff ended May 31st. Your payment of 8,000 to CME has been scheduled for Wednesday, October 16th, but it was sent October the 9th and that was 5th, 3rd. Every, every transaction, Paul has sent it to me. So I've got all six of them here. I guess I'm trying to understand why it came to that. And it wasn't done in a more timely manner. That I can't answer. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yeah, actually, those uh, that were sent on 1010 were received last Thursday. They got those Thursday afternoon, those two checks. But didn't have 10 nines. It's, what's that? But didn't have ten nine checks. Um, it was it says it was issued ten ten received last Thursday. Everybody should have your guys check their accounts to make sure yeah. it's I, there. And I believe I believe ought to have it. I believe people have been checking in the money there. So, yeah, CME chose to front the money for us to go from there. All right. Thank you. Hey, um, do they have anything else? Did you get, you didn't speak at all? Mm -hmm. So have you both dressed? No, no, not really. No, not really. Mine's going to be a little different now. I did prepare a speech, but you can go first if you want. I, I wrote and checked something up for okay. based on the information I had at two thirty. Okay, so you have to bear with me on that. That's what I I did this, and then I when I looked at my account, I had to go back and buy this. Okay. Okay, I'm not the world's greatest public speaker. Just do the best that I can. 
and yard out, 4680 London Grove Fort Road. Been a resident nine years now, something like that. Um, I felt, I feel like it's very important for me tonight to let the firefighters, road crew, employees, trustees know that there are residents here that support you and everything that you do. Um, yes, I was in public service for 34 years, so I think I can speak from experience on a lot of things. And when did paramedic service start here in, in the township? Is it like late, late 70s, early, early oh, yeah. 80s? Steve Evans was here, Brian Bays was here during that time. Anyway, it, it's been a long time since Pleasant Town had started, started the paramedic service. From Delaware County, before we had EMS, it was the Sheriff's Department. And if something happened to you, the Sheriff ran in and scooped you up on a backboard, or I guess it was funeral homes too, maybe same thing here, and took you where you doctor's office maybe. Um, we've come a long way. And I myself, from experience, if something happens to me, if a doctor is driving down the road, I hope he continues on and wait till the paramedics come to take care of me. Because the paramedics in Ohio perform stuff every day in emergency situations and know what they're doing. They're trained, I don't know how many hours they go through today, it's a lot. And they're almost really doctors when they're done. They truly, truly are. Most medics can do a lot more than a lot of registered nurses can that don't that are just basic nurses. Um, that's why they they work in the ERs, because they can do a lot of stuff. They do stuff that the doctors have no clue what they're doing. If somebody needs to be innovated, the doctor, I, I think, would get the medic over to do the innovation rather than China himself. And those are the people I want working here. And I think we have working here. I know we have working here. And it costs money. It's like business. It costs money to keep good people here. And I know in the fire service, I think unlike business, you invest in those people. You invest in those good people because they are, they are you. They are the township. They're your representative. When people are in their worst way, those are the people that are rushing in, whether it's a fire or, or, or EMS. Okay. And you have an investment in those and it costs money to keep those people, to keep good people. But you don't want those that can't do the job here. You want the good people and you want to keep them and it costs money to keep those people, right? A business, dime a dozen people. Okay, your production goes down, you know, you get rid of one guy to bring in somebody else. It's not a business. This is a specialty art, okay? And I applaud what we, how we treat our, our people here. Our contract, from my understanding, was a mediated contract. Now, what that means is Correct me if I'm wrong, everybody is looked at in the county, okay? And nope, I know we're not paying our people what Columbus pe people probably make, but they're comparative with everybody else. Why is that not, why is that unfair? That's the fair thing. That's how we keep these good people here, all right? And there was mentioned, well, only two people live in our, our township, maybe, you know, they, the rest of them should live. No. People are established in their homes, maybe the homes are still living with their parents. They can live wherever they choose and work wherever they choose. I think the Supreme Court back in the early 80s got to get away with government being able to require their employees to live in the places that they serve. Okay. When I started, I lived in Delaware County and my first job was in Groveport. Okay. Departments needed to be able to to go outside and get the good people that they have. So by living, say, oh, you gotta live in our township. No, they live where they live. Some people already work two and three jobs. I worked with a, a part-time firefighter where I was, and I think he worked 
at least two other, maybe three other departments, all right, at the time, trying to get in, let people see what he could do, and eventually got hired full time. Okay. And that same firefighter died in his hometown fire department in a, in a basement fire one night. Okay. So, just think that there's all this talk about, well, we're paying for them to, to live, to buy their groceries. That's BS, okay? These are good people that deserve to make similar to what everybody else makes. And if we can't keep them here close to where other people are, they're going to go elsewhere. And we're going to lose that investment that we have. Every firefighter that comes in here, they're fitted for their gear. It's not just go out and find something that fits you. There are requirements to protect them in a, in a fire, all right, and how gear fits them. How their face pieces fit is tested every year to make sure. It's a cost, all right? The physical, the, the, the uh, physical fitness that we do out here, all right? And I'll tell you this, where I worked, there were these guys out there and every day, they're pumping iron, all right? They're all doing all this stuff and everything. And every year, the guys that were hurt the most and had the most injuries were those guys that were just out there pumping iron, okay? So I applaud what we have here because the, the program, as I understand it, actually teaches firefighters how to, how to lift appropriately in, in different situations, whether it's using an ax, pulling ropes, um, Biggest one, most all injuries, was pulling the guy that's in a rest between the toilet and the wall out. All right? One guy who retired a couple years after I did, he just had surgery again for his back because of the exact same thing. Okay? So if we can teach these guys the right way to, to lift, it lowers our costs, it keeps them healthy, all right, and, and keeps them on the job. I remember a few years back how much overtime and the people were being mandated day in, day out to cover positions. Now, some people will say, well, two people on a fire truck. Fire truck gets to the, it's never a fire. You just got to drive to the to the house, you know, where they get the call from. No, you, you can't do it with two people. You can't, it's, it's hard enough putting two people on a medic, all right? Or two guys on an engine arrive on an EMS call and somebody can rest, all right? So somebody's in pump, somebody's doing respiration, somebody's trying an IV. Well, there's not enough people to do it all, all right? We need these people here. We need an EMS truck to arrive. We need a fire truck to arrive. We need those people to do the jobs to save the lives of anyone that's in here or people traveling through our township. You know, so but saying these people aren't worth it, I just don't understand it, all right? And that's my piece. So, take it or leave it. Thank you. Yep. I'll say okay. Okay, Alicia. Okay. Well, I guess I couldn't hear. I, too, don't like public speaking, and I'm not good at it. My name's Alicia, <clears throat> um, Rolling Hills Lane. Uh, this was prepared prior to me knowing the funds were in the account, thanks to whoever got the money put into the account because they didn't receive eight or seven checks. Um, I don't know how many we said there were. So I'm just going to read this. So bear with me. Due to the uncertainty and the unclearness and confusion of the last two meetings that I've attended to obtain the HSA funds, and the lack of being able to deposit the funds into the appropriate accounts, I need to make a public statement and request this again. Well, it's been done, so thank you. Um, the township changed from the HRA that ended May 31st, 2024, and the HSA began June 1. The funds still have not been deposited into the accounts from the previous meeting. The fiscal officer stated due to glitches, and it's just not that simple. I, along with others participating in the HSA employees, earned and deserve as a part of the benefits package that was passed at the last meeting, 
2024 resolution 71 to initiate payment on 10 9 to send CME $54,000. As of today at 2 30, it wasn't there, but as of 5 o'clock, I guess it was there. Um, I was presented with a document. I was sent a document that said there was resolution 66 that was passed on September 1st. Can we look up and see what resolution 66 is? Because that number 1st, September 1st. It was passed by trustee Hunter and trustee good and trustee sheets voted. No. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You have that resolution and was it for the HSA? Right. So then on September 1st, I mean, we know it wasn't deposited before that. So on September 1st, when it was passed the 1st time. Why wasn't the money sent at that time? And why do we keep, keep hearing glitches? And it's just not that simple. It's simple to write a check. It's simple to transfer funds. And I know there's a maximum per day, but. Multiple people have offered to take the check to them. Um, it's been observed by myself and other employees and taxpaying citizens that the fiscal officer has not been responsive to the needs of the township and township employees. Since my attendance, many people have approached me to state several issues with bills being paid late or with unprofessional notes on the checks or not being paid at all. So I would like to request, and I want to know if there's a formal form that you guys have, I would like to request some financial statements bank statements to make sure they coincide to see where the money's going. Uh, she rattled off a bunch of numbers today. That was the first time that I'd heard, and I'm not saying anybody's doing anything wrong. It's just um, very unclear as to, you know, when you pat, when you say make a motion to pass or pay the bills and you pass the bills, today was the first time, and I, I haven't attended a lot of meetings. It's the first time I heard her go down through a list of bills. So I, I would, I think that that needs to be in a public place where people can go and, and review them. Um, because now everybody, not just me, everybody that I've talked to has concerns and questions as to what's going on. We just want to make sure that um, the township is being run wonderfully and smoothly, like we've all thought it's been going, but due to these snags that have happened over the last four or five months, everybody has concerns. So. Is there a form we need to request some documents some financial statements and. Um, Do you have a just provide a list? Or, no, she can just provide a list. Put in a record request record just, request. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And who do I submit that to all of you? Submit it if it's. Financial submit it to Paula. Okay. All right, and then um, I know it has to be. Um, um, we have to have, or we're allowed to have access to it in a timely manner. So once I submit that, how long should I give the fiscal officer to respond to what we need? I believe the law is a reasonable amount of time. What is that time? A reasonable amount of time. That's what the law states. Right. It depends on the amount requested also. Okay. All right, but there's no, you guys don't have your own form that we need to fill out. Okay, all right, that's all I need. Um, anybody have any questions for me? Again, sorry, it was a little outdated because I did it at 2 30. Yeah, I'm going, I will. Um, just for clarification, um, it was mentioned that bills are being paid late. Um, we pay our bills um, at the meeting. Um, I come over late Monday evening every night before our meeting and get all the bills. And so any bills I have are made as timely as I get them. All the mail I get, 99% of it comes through the fire department. So as the trustees can witness, I had came over at the last meeting on Monday night, got bills, did them. And when we came in Tuesday night, there was a whole stack of bills. Okay. So those were obviously delayed till tonight. May I ask a direct uh, question? Uh, wait, I want to respond to that. Mail comes every day. So 
every day mail gets put in those folders. So when you pick the stuff up Monday night, mail come in on Tuesday, and that's why there was a. Oh, theft. I'm not saying there wasn't. I'm just know, explaining but, but that, was all, that. That was the implication. But that I'm just saying, I any bills that I get, I come over the night before a meeting to make sure that they're as paid as timely as possible. So I can only do what I have received on Monday night. So the bills that were here on Tuesday were prepared for tonight. So why don't you get the mail daily? Because it wouldn't matter. Get... She can only pay yeah. bills when the trustees approve the checks. <clears throat> so she paid everything through yesterday. Anything that comes in between now and the next meeting, she can't just arbitrarily write a check. She's got to wait until the next trustee meeting to submit them for pay for approval to the trustees, and then they go out. Correct, but they, they can get an idea of what rather than doing it just all at one time through accumulate stuff. I need to do this. And if there's any questions, you know, you have a week to ask any questions, whether uh, about the bill to the to the whoever sent the bill or to the chief. If there's any questions, they're typically addressed at the meetings and the trustees either say, yes, we should do that. No, we shouldn't. The chief explains it. The road department explains it. And then Paula goes home or wherever it is she goes to write these checks. And then she calls the trustees and either comes to their house or they come here to the fire department and sign those checks because they were previously approved at the meeting she can then write the check, even if it's the day after. Like when there's a mistake on payroll, she finds the mistake on payroll, she issues another check, and then she gets a hold of Nancy, Randy, and Ed to come in and sign that check so the fireman or whoever vendor can get their check. But she can only pay what the trustees approve. It doesn't matter when it comes in, it's only gonna get approved at the meeting and get sent out. That's correct, but if she comes in on Wednesday and picks up an envelope and it says unpaid, unpaid, late, late, then, then on Wednesday she should be able to take that and address it, whether it was go to the trustees, all right, or figure out what happened. But they can't not, approve it without a meeting. Correct. So if it's going to wait, what difference does it correct. make what day she gets it? It's only going to get approved and paid at the meeting. I'm, you're not following me. You're not following me. I get some bills rather than not only on the night before. I'm just saying so that they're as timely as can be. I make sure that I come over the night before so that there is any bill that has came in in that two weeks can get paid. So I come over the night before just to make sure that I've got all the bills that I possibly could have. And then once the trustees approve for you to pay them when they get paid. So once the they signed the checks tonight, I have the checks are all prepared and paper put to each of those. So that after the meeting's over with, that's what they do is they step down and sign. So the once that resolution or whatever is passed and you guys have approved it, then that, then the check goes to you and everybody signs off on it. So why I'm going to ask a direct question. Why on September 1st did this or um, yeah, did this resolution 66 when it passed? Why did it not get paid? They made what? a resolution to pay it. They did not make the resolution to transfer the funds to pay it until the last meeting. You were here. You heard them. I understand that, but I'm still trying to figure out why. I guess I thought that was, that was one and the same. Approving to send the money and approving to transfer the money. I thought it was one and the same thing. I did too. Thank so you. I, I'm well, not an idiot then. Thank no, you. I, I, I assumed that that resolution on September 1st was to send the money. I made the I made the resolution. That was the intention behind it. If another one was needed. Well, that's that's where she should have also said that same time. Okay, now we need to make a resolution to, to move the money. That's I guess I don't understand the difference between the two things. Paying something and transferring it to me is one and the same. I agree. But, well, well, obviously it's not. If, if, if she knew that it, it needed to be a motion to transfer it and at that that meeting right after 66, it should have been 67, motion to move the I, I, I can't I answer that. I just have to voice my I can't. Well, and, and when it comes to the mail thing, 
if, if we get a bunch of mail on Tuesday, Paula, you know, I have offered to bring you the mail and you've refused. It doesn't, we can't, I can't pay it for two weeks. It's, if I bring you the mail I, on Tuesday afternoon and we have a trustee's meeting Tuesday night, why can't you write a check and get it approved Tuesday night? You what now? If, if the mail comes at noon on Tuesday and I bring you the mail and you get the bills and you write a check and the trustees approve it Tuesday night at the meeting, what, what's wrong with that? It takes a while to do all that because I have to go through and organize the bills and then I go back through previously paid bills to make sure it isn't a duplicate or that it hasn't already been paid. It's a little time consuming rather than just sitting right now the chat. I know it takes a okay. little bit of time. Okay. Does your does it start exactly popping up on, like in line if I put in an invoice number for a vendor, it's already been paid, it'll pop up and say, Hey, you've already paid this invoice number. I I was following. It does it does not. She said it does not. Okay, anything else? Is there a um uh, Accounting program that other townships use that we are not using that could could help expedite things. I mean, I don't know. I don't know this. I use UAN. It's the uniform or unified accounting network that's put out by the um, by by the state. The state for for like township mm -hmm. accounting. Yeah. Oh. Um, but I don't believe it's a requirement to use it. No, um, but would it expedite? Would it help? I don't know. I can't say what. Well, already is. paying the yeah. bills. As soon as we get them, yeah, so I, I it's don't, like I don't know the difference between the two. Is that something? Paula is an elected official on her own. We can't tell her what accounting. I wasn't was suggesting anyone accepted. tell. I was just asking: Is there a? There are. You know, we get like, used. Yes, it, we get used to doing things one things. way, mm -hmm. and sometimes there's a better mm -hmm. way to do it. But we get stuck in a rut, and that's all I was trying to. You know, is there? Different way that there are might things. speed things up for her and alleviate some of her time. Thank you. Anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? No, I think. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Yes. Trustee Hunter. Yes. Trustee Good. 